Hello friends, welcome back to the Craft Castle. Today we're gonna to be doing an Inkscape tutorial and we are gonna be doing a Grinch hand. It is almost holiday season and the one thing that I look forward to is counting down the days of Christmas. So for this part of the tutorial is simply just going to be how to make your own layered SVG file inside of Inkscape. Inkscape is a free design program. That's right, it is free, costs nothing. I have been using this program for many years. I've never been charged anything and it is the coolest program. All we're gonna do is find some clip art off the internet and we're gonna import it into Inkscape and make our own SVG file. So for another video in the future, what I'm gonna do with this new layered SVG file is create my own countdown to Christmas clock. I'm so excited about it, but Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's create this layered SVG file. Let's get started. Okay, so the very first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to open up your internet browser and you wanna search up Grinch hand clip art. There are two things to keep in mind when you are searching for clip arts that we are going to use. Very first thing is, is that you don't wanna use clip arts that have a watermark. So this one right here, it's hard to tell, but there is a watermark there. And then there is this one right here. There's also another watermark. You don't want to use those ones. The other thing too is that you don't want to use ones that say like this says in stock. If we were to click it, someone is selling this. Do not try, not only does this have a watermark, but also someone's trying to sell it. Don't try and take other people's artwork like this one right here that's for sale. Although there's no watermark, we still don't want to use that because someone is trying to sell this. So I have found a free one. I will link the one that I'm using in the description of this video, just so you can do like an apples to apples of what I'm doing so you know exactly what you should be doing. It's going to be this one right here. I think it's so stinking cute and I like that it has like a little bit of movement into the fur. Okay, the very next thing you wanna do is right click and press open image in new tab. Now what we wanna do is we wanna take a screenshot. So on my computer, a screenshot is Command Shift 4. I am on a Mac. This like little aiming tool will pop up. You wanna draw a box around the entire thing that you're trying to screenshot. Now, I'm actually not going to use the bulb for this. So if I was doing this for myself, I would just skip a whole bunch of steps and do it like this. However, I wanna show you how we are gonna like create something different with a full screenshot. So I'm gonna do the full one and just let go. This is right here. Then what you wanna do is open up Inkscape and we are gonna drag our screenshot into Inkscape. We're just gonna press okay. And this is what our screenshot looks like. Now this is not an SVG file yet, so don't stop here. <laughs> All right, the very next thing you wanna do is you're gonna right click, making sure that your screenshot is clicked. You're gonna right click and we're gonna go down to trace bitmap. Okay, this box is going to pop up. Now I have a newer version of Inkscape. If you are using an older version and it looks a little different, all the things that I do are all the same. It's just placed in different places, but this is what the newest Inkscape update looks like. All the buttons and everything I do is all gonna be the same. Do you see how this right here is completely filled in, but over here it's like, it's supposed to be red. I'm gonna bump my threshold down just a little bit. Oh, and do you see how it's like live previewing for me? This is great, look at that. Okay, so I just bumped it down just a little bit. Do you see how now over on the left, we have the red um, over on, on the clip art, but then now, we have it and it's just white and there's a full outline. That's perfect, that's exactly what I wanted. Now, remember, I said I am actually not even going to use the bulb for this. If you wanted the bulb, then you just wanted to keep going down until the entire bulb was shown. But since I'm not gonna use it, that's not what I'm concerned about. I like this, so then I'm just gonna press apply. Okay, and because I left the bulb the way that it is. Now I can see that, oh, something has changed. All I'm gonna do is taking that screen, that new change, and I'm gonna drag it over. You see how now what we were looking at over on that trace bitmap screen is now, it looks like what it's supposed to. 
Okay, this right here is our screenshot, the original screenshot that is not a layered SVG file. I'm only just going to drag it over here just to keep it as reference as I continue to build my SVG file, but we technically don't need that. I'm gonna drag our trace bitmap over Yeah. Okay, the very first thing I wanna do is do you see this right here? how that arm is like at a lean. I actually want it to be completely straight. So what I'm gonna do is come over here into these node tools. Let's zoom in on that. I'm just gonna press the plus sign and zoom in. Okay, I'm going to click on the only the outside node. So pressing one node, shift on my keyboard, and I'm only gonna press the outside nodes. Zoom in just a little bit more. Okay, when I have everything on the outside clicked, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to the align tool and I'm going to align all of my nodes straight in a line. Watch this. See how now everything just went straight? Okay, now what I'm going to do is go into the inside nodes. I'm going to click just the inside nodes, shift on the keyboard and only those inside nodes that are on that line. Okay, gotten all of them highlighted. See how they're all highlighted? I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna make them straight. Okay, when I made that straight, do you see what happened? Now, my entire line is completely straight. Now what you could do is just readjust these lines. There is just a little bit of a bend here and I don't really want that much of a bend. Let's just delete this node and we'll make this straight. Okay, clicking out of that, do you see how now my line is straight and it's no longer crooked? That's just a personal preference of mine. I have a vision of what my SVG file is going to look like for the use that I need it for. So I'm just com customizing this to my own liking. Okay, now that we have that straight line, now it's gonna be the fun part. Let's go up here into this arrow tool. We're gonna select our screenshot. Let me zoom out on the minus, pressing the minus key. Okay, we are going to press Command, Shift, and K. When we do that, we have it all black now. Okay, anytime we do this, we release the path. What has happened is, is the largest piece always gets sent to the front. All happens all the time. And everything gets changed to black as well. So it kind of looks like you just have one crazy little blob here. Trust the process. Now, this very back piece for me is going to be black at the very end. However, just so we can see what we're doing, I am gonna change it over to a lighter color. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this and I'm gonna arrange it to the back. When we do that, see how everything else popped up and now we have different colors? It's exactly what we wanted. It was being hidden behind that big black piece. Okay, let's zoom in pressing the plus sign on our keyboard and we are going to click this big piece of hand is going to be green. Shift on my keyboard, and I'm also going to select the fingers because those are also gonna be green. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna press the green color. Seems pretty realistic. Okay, then I'm gonna do this one right here. This is going to be white. And then this right here is his shirt, and I'm gonna change it red. Looking good. Okay. This right here is actually his cutout of his hand. So it's supposed to be like this, right? But when we released all of the past, what happens is, is you also release that cutout. So in order to get that back, we need to select that black piece, shift on the keyboard. We are gonna select the very back piece. Now it's gray, it is supposed to be black. When you have both pieces selected, you wanna press Command, Shift, and the minus key. We just sliced it right on through. Now you can see the background of our artboard, which is white, and now you have that little hole cut out that's right there. Okay, you are probably asking yourself at what point in time are we going to delete this bowl? Now's the time. All right, we, all we need to do is just come up here. Do you see this? how this string is connecting to that long bowl? We need to find the eraser tool going to be right here. Click that eraser tool. And what you want to do, let's zoom in. All I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag this eraser tool down like this. Okay. When you have that done, just click out of that. Let's zoom in. 
All right, we got some little funky monkeys here. That's okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here into the node tool. Whoa, and there is like a lot of nodes. More nodes, the worse the cut will be. So what you wanna do is really eliminate a lot of nodes if you can. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all these nodes that are right here. I don't really need them. And let's just start deleting some nodes. Okay, when I have them pretty much deleted, that like wiggly line came in. All you wanna do is just take this we're gonna move the line back in. Okay, clicking out of that, do you see how now we have like a nice straight line clicking back on the gray and we have eliminated all of those nodes that were right there. Less nodes, the better the cut, remember that. So when we zoom out and we're looking at our gray, which is supposed to be black, you can see that there's not a lot of nodes. That means we're on the right path. We have a really good SVG file coming. Do you see all that? Let's click the green. See how there's not a whole lot of nodes in the green? We did a good job. Let's do the white. Same thing, I like this. It's looking good. Now this one kind of has a lot of nodes. If you wanted to, you could just like come over here and delete the nodes. So if you are a Cricut crafter, you would probably get this. I'm just gonna say this, and this is me rambling. If you're a Cricut crafter and you have uploaded your own SVG files or you've purchased an SVG file and you're like using your Cricut and all of a sudden your blade starts to go as it's making the cut, that means that there was far too many nodes in that SVG file. So that is just like the telltale sign. You want that Cricut blade to go zoop, 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 not sound effects. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, coming over here into the red, I'm just gonna delete some more nodes. I'm gonna make this looking super cute. Love it. Okay, let's zoom out. Remember we deleted some nodes that were up here? We did not delete nodes down here. So clicking back over onto that gray, I am now just gonna select all the nodes that are in this gray and delete. Okay, I got all those grays, but now I have like all of these small little pieces right here. Instead of deleting nodes, what I'm gonna do is come up here into the selector tool and I'm just gonna select all of them and delete. Okay, let's zoom out. Okay, in all technicalities, this is a finished layered SVG file. However, I'm gonna take it one step further. For me personally, I do not like to have to glue a lot of pieces. It doesn't matter the medium. If I'm working with wood or acrylic, if I'm working with vinyl or cardstock, the least amount of gluing and the least amount of random pieces that my arthritis fingers can handle, the better. So with that being said, if we zoom in, do you see how technically this green and these fingers are all going to be its own separate pieces? That kind of seems like a whole lot of gluing and missing pieces for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one finger and I'm gonna press these nodes. I'm gonna drag my the nodes that are here at the very end and I'm gonna drag them, let's zoom in, I'm gonna drag it over to the hand. Now what I'm gonna do is select that next finger, doing the same thing. I'm only gonna take the nodes on the very left, on the like closest to the hand as possible, and I'm gonna do the same thing. We're gonna drag it up to the hand. Let's do the last finger, same thing. We're just gonna select all the nodes at the very left, and I'm gonna drag it up to the hand. Now, if we think outside the box here, this is not welded together, but if we think here, this right here is gonna have a really weird cutout. So clicking back over on that finger, I'm just gonna move this node around so it kind of makes the finger look a little different. Let's move this down. This is the beauty of creating your own SVG files is you get to create them exactly how you want them. Okay, now let's zoom out. Let's unclick. Okay, that looks that looks good in my opinion. A lot less pieces that we're gonna have to glue. Okay, these are still not welded together, so you would still have all of these pieces to glue. So what you wanna do is come up here into the arrow tool. We're gonna select that big green hand piece, shift on the keyboard, and then we're gonna do these three uh, fingers. Then what you wanna do is command shift and the plus sign. Now it's all welded together. This is one fully welded piece. It's going to be a lot easier for me to glue or to layer or to cut and at the end, which is great for me. I love that. Simplifying the process for me at a later time. Okay, 
Remember what I said originally, the very back piece, I want to be black. So now I'm gonna click that dark gray and I'm gonna just click it to black. Now this is my finished layered SVG file. Now what I'm gonna do is select that original screenshot. I don't want it and I'm just gonna delete it. Gone, done, isn't that, this is it. Now all you wanna do is save this. Okay, and just to show you that this works, the countdown clock thing that I'm gonna be working on is going to be on my Cricut. So I just open up my Cricut, I'm gonna go into upload and upload image, and I'm gonna find that saved file. Okay, there is my saved SVG file that we created together, and I'm just gonna press upload. All right, then what you wanna do is just click your upload, press add to canvas. There is our SVG file, isn't that? That, that was easy, right? Okay, so let's right click, let's just ungroup, and look at that. You have now created your own SVG file that you can use inside of your Cricut. You could also use this in your laser cutter, or I've heard that these tutorials work for embroidery, embroidery machines as well. The world is your oyster with these SVG files and you can use it for practically anything. All right, y'all, I sure hope I inspired you to create and I will see you back here where we make the Grinch Hand Christmas countdown clock. I'm so stoked. I'll see you later.